Dragon Ball Z is a show that I grew up with, or maybe not grew up with, it kind of like came around when I was like in early middle school. I want to be very clear about this, there was no Cartoon Network. I caught Dragon Ball Z at 4.30 in the morning on Channel 9, so if I get some of this stuff wrong, it's because it's been 30 years, and I apologize to those of you weebs out there who are going to school me in the comments. <laughs> All right, today on How to Drink, I'm going to ask the question, what would Goku drink? And of course, the Goku I'm referring to is Goku, also known as Kakarot, from the Dragon Ball series. One of the most beloved and popular, maybe the most popular anime of all time, creation of Akira Toriyama, the story of a young monkey-tailed alien who fell to Earth to fight other aliens on our behalf. I don't know how else to sum that up. I think that's kind of it. You know what Dragon Ball is. You gotta get the seven Dragon Balls. You gotta make a wish on the dragon. Bring your friends back to life. Generally, that's what they do. The Z Fighters. That's what they call them. The Z Fighters. And so Goku, he burns about 90,000 calories a day while he's training and fighting. And so he eats everything in his, in his sight. And I looked into this. I was like, what is Goku's favorite food? Because I thought maybe I'd reference it in the show and then I didn't remember. But no, he just eats everything. He eats mainly rice and noodles. The two ingestibles that come up a couple of times in the show at key points are, of course, senzu beans, which come from the cat that lives on the tower. And I can't remember his name. <laughs> Comic? Nam Namek, Namek, Nam Namek, Namek the cat in the tower, yeah. What's your name? Corin. Yeah, it's coming back to me now, the cat in the tower. Uh, and he's got the senzu beans, and senzu beans are, they look like little soybeans, and they're edamame. When you eat them, you're fully restored. All of your health, all of your, your physical thing, you don't need to sleep, you don't need to eat, you're fully restored on senzu beans. And then the other thing that comes up, and I guess this is actually in... Dragon Ball, not Dragon Ball Z, but is Ultra Divine Water, which I have to assume is a bad translation. Ultra Divine Water, uh, which Goku finds in a cave with the uh, spiritual entity of darkness. So I had this idea for a drink for Goku. So these are my senzu beans today. These are tonka beans. Tonka beans are um, bluntly not lawful to use or own in the United States, but your old boy Greg's got them anyway. We've, these have come up on the show a couple times. Tonka beans used to be um, used in a lot of foods and flavors here in the U.S. They were outlawed um, for their coumarin content, which is bad for one of your organs, so don't mess around with it too much. Curiously, they were outlawed at the exact same moment that Dow Chemical, I think, came out with a uh, synthesized replacement for the flavor that they provided. And also, curiously, um, the, the, these can be used as a precursor for making MDMA, or so I am told. Uh, and that might have also something to do with why they were outlawed. But anyway, they are one of the most glorious and potent smelling... Oh, just a magic smell. It is like vanilla, cinnamon, and chocolate all rolled into a caramel, buttery piece of magic. It is, there's nothing like these on earth. When you open the jar, the entire room is just flooded with their smell. So I made a syrup from them. The way that I made it was by taking two parts sugar to one part water and 15 tonka beans, which is maybe overkill. Uh, we're gonna need that. We're gonna need some gin. The only gin for a Saiyan monkey space alien would be monkey 47 gin and um, some chartreuse and also lime juice. So let's get your shaker out and shake this drink up this divine senzu thing so we get an ounce of lime we're gonna get a whole ounce of my tonka syrup we're gonna do an ounce of monkey 47 gin and an ounce of chartreuse now if you're paying very close attention you may have noticed that this is a variation on the last word and you are correct but you might also be asking, what happened to the maraschino? Well, the maraschino got turned into simple. Well, in this case, tonka syrup. And a lot of people also, not a lot of people, but I occasionally get comments with people doing like laughing and crying emoji, saying maraschino, <laughs> like I'm pronouncing it wrong. So here's the thing, in, as far as I know, bartenders that I have met use the word maraschino when we're talking about the liqueur or the imported cherries, because that's the Italian pronunciation, right? And if you say maraschino, it's understood to be shorthand for American-style preserved cherries, which are nowhere near the quality or 
flavor complexity of the Italian counterpart. Um, they're distantly related, kind of. I'm not going to get into it right now. But like, we use both words, both pronunciations, to mean different things. And I'm not going to stand here and pronounce maraschino to make you fucking happy. I'm just not going to do it. So we got our tonka bean is standing in for senzu beans. We got our monkey 47 gin, which is standing in for our Goku with the monkey tail. And our ultra divine water, well, that's chartreuse, because uh, it's made by chartreusian monks, and they're ultra divine. Come on, guys, you got to go with me on this. Lime juice, well, it just ties it all together. At this point, I'm going to add some ice, shake it up, and serve it. Strain that. I'm gonna garnish this with a twist of orange. I'm gonna put it on a katana. And there we have the Divine Senzu. Whoa. Whoa. What an intoxicatingly intense flavor. Oh my God, that's really cool. The Tonka bean and chartreuse combo is an explosive flavor. It is honey, sweet, vanilla, chocolate, cocoa, caramel and spicy in a little bit of a weird way, but not like pepper spice, but like herbal spices. I'm not quite sure I can put my finger on it. The lime juice really brings us together. Once again, this is another drink that proves that you cannot go far wrong, making a variation on the last word. Uh, really brings it together. The gin, I know it's contributing something to this drink because that is a powerful flavor, but it's hard to pick it out from what's going on here on its own. I don't think this would work as well with any other spirit though. Let's put it that way. I think it's an important part of what's happening. That is dangerously remarkably good. Super well balanced, very easy to drink. The orange twist is very present. It has a, a bright orange note right in the front there. It rides right through. I am, this is a very good drink. I'm very happy with the way this drink came out. Is it the best Dragon Ball Z drink? I don't know. Are there other ones? Are there a lot of Dragon Ball? It might be the only Dragon Ball Z drink. I think I got this market cornered. I don't know. All right, right after this, I'm gonna see if I can come up with some uh, drinks for Dragon Ball Z characters on the fly. No preparation, I'll be right back. On another Dragon Ball Z. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> you know, one thing that both of us love, Meredith, is Mr. Black. And that's why we're so lucky that they got to sponsor this episode. I don't know when the last time I just tasted some straight Mr. Black on the show was, but so there we go. It's, um, you know, if you're thinking about other coffee liqueurs, they, this makes them taste like syrups by comparison. Lightly sweetened, very strong coffee flavor. Doesn't really taste like chocolate like some other ones that I've encountered, you know, where they just taste like chocolate syrup a lot of times. This is fantastic stuff. You know, you can do a lot with this. It comes from Australia and they roast their own beans. They thought it would be really fun if I showed you a... Uh, a cocktail that is great to make with Mr. Black. We're gonna make a Mr. Black coffee Negroni. I'm going to build this over a big old ice cube. I'm gonna throw in one ounce of delicious coffee liqueur, Mr. Black. I'm gonna throw in one ounce of Campari, which sounds crazy to pair Campari and coffee, but it actually works really nicely. One ounce of gin, and I'm gonna happen to use aviation gin today. It's a fine gin to use in this drink. Get that nice and stirred. Garnish that with a simple twist of orange. Drop that in. Salut. I like it better than a regular Negroni by a long shot. This is delicious. Coffee and orange sweet bitterness combined in a delicious drink. Absolutely delicious drink. Probably the finest gin delivery vehicle I've ever had. Uh, but really the Mr. Black is out front and center and boy, you know, you don't think that they're going to, but Mr. Black and Campari really go well together. <laughs> they are a match made in heaven. I. I have no notes, no complaints. Excellent drink. Thank you again, Mr. Black. Swing by mrblack.co to uh, learn more uh, or find a bottle near you. And now, back to the show. How long, so you said you watched as a kid, is it still going? And it's like a Pokemon thing? What? Goku is an alien, a Saiyan from, I forget the name of their homeworld, some some planet. Saiyan, Saiyan, Saram, Saiyaman. All of the Saiyans things are vegetables. Vegeta, Raditz, he's a radish. Goku's real name is Kakarot. They are super powerful, super powerful, vicious, boxing karate guys from outer space who can turn into super Saiyans. They get very angry, they train real hard, uh, and then they're, they burst into flames. I'm super Saiyan! So they become unstoppably powerful. So is that like a season arc or would that be every episode? What do you mean? Like that this, they beat this thing. They no, go no, 9, no, no. Face off. 
wreathed in fire. You'd get close-ups on the eyes, just the eyes. Whoa, he's like grinning. And like you'd hear the internal monologue, gotta build my strength. <laughs> His power is over 9,000! Just like fire around him and both fighters are doing that. And it would go on like that for like four weeks. Just still there building his strength. And then finally they would fight. Can't even see them. There's like flashes of fists and stuff. Like, whoa, man, that like blew my mind as a kid. But it's been around for decades. So Dragon Ball is a lot different from Dragon Ball Z. There's a sequel of Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball, Goku's a youngster. We, we high. He... Uh, learns karate from a guy named Master Roshi, who happens to be a very problematic, lecherous pervert. Funny then, but now is not. And he hung out with Bulma. She was the heiress to the Capsule Corp fortune. Capsule Corp being the made-up company that sort of made everything, but it all comes in capsules. You have a capsule for like a motorcycle. Boop! Capsule. In her own anime way, Bulma. A babe. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, definitely as, if, uh, as a young man, you're crushing on the Bulma a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. In a healthy way. In a fine way. Uh, you know, adventures. The Ox King, King Piccolo, you know, all kinds of strange things afoot. I, it's funny, I didn't really grow up with Dragon Ball. My understanding is that in Dragon Ball, martial arts is not actually a focus. But then that really did well. So the publishers told Akira, you need to do a lot more karate stuff. <laughs> and so Dragon Ball Z is entirely about martial arts and karate, karate fellas fighting space monsters. So here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna go a riffin, a riffin I will go. We're gonna make up some drinks on the fly. Oh, Greg, Bulma sounded pretty cool. You want Bul Bulma, the blue haired girl who's the heiress yeah. with the money, the money. She wants the money, boys. That's right, making that fancy drink. All right, we're gonna do it. We're gonna shake that drink. Uh, I'm kind of riffing off of a drink called a blue motorcycle because I have a vague memory of Bulma having a cool motorcycle at some point in the show. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna need lemon and we're gonna need lime. We're gonna do half an ounce of lime. Half oh, 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 oh. oh my God. We're gonna do half an ounce of lemon. Now we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, basically making what some folks might call sour mix. Now, now, <laughs> things get a little complicated. We're gonna do Three quarters of an ounce of tequila. I'm using La Gretona, possibly available at Curiata at drink.curiata.com. Three quarters of an ounce of gin. Three quarters of an ounce of Stolik. Stolich? No, you. Half an ounce of maraschino. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of blue curacao. We're gonna shake that over ice. Okay, here we go. One big. Crack the other one. Get your science fiction glass out. Strain that in there. Pop it up with seltzer. There we go. That's Bulma Blue. Throw a garnish on there of a couple of cherries. And I think that is the Bulma cocktail, if there ever was one for her blue hair. I lost my cherries in there. That's tasty. Oh, that's fun. Lemon, lime, an interesting note that comes in from the maraschino. It is very, it's herbal. It is, it's, they're made from cherry nuts, like cherry trees, cherry bark, cherry ch stems cherry leaves, the fruit, yes, um, the pits. It brings in a very cherry adjacent flavor. Um, people think it's like a cherry liqueur. It's not, it's more like a amaretto or something. The lemon and the lime and the sweetness are all really well balanced. This is a very delightful lemon lime soda that's alcoholic and quite alcoholic with a very interesting twist in there. I don't know, Balma's so world traveled. Balma is so, um, cosmopolitan in my memory of her. She was able to go anywhere anytime she wanted to because she was so uh, frankly wealthy and equipped with science fiction and technology. Uh, so I don't know, I think that this mixture of spirits and blueness, of course, uh, speaks to her character. I like that. All right, let's move along and make another drink. Let's make one for Krillin, one of Goku's best friends. Krillin is a monk, uh, he is bald. He is one of the strongest humans on Earth. I always liked Krillin when I was a kid. He was like one of my favorite characters. When I think of Krillin, I think of the fact that he wears orange and that he's got six uh, red dots on his forehead. Those are the two defining features of Krillin and that he's supposed to be sort of a sensible foil. He's always trying to, he's a foil. He's always trying to hold uh, Goku back, you know, be reasonable, Goku. But he's always there. You know, he's a Samwise Gamgee to Frodo's Gil Bobo, Bobo, Bobo Baggins. Bobo Gaggins. Yeah, let me tell you about Bobo Gaggins. Who's Bobo Gaggins? Ain't my cousin around the way, Bobo Gaggins. No, he is Samwise Gamgee's to uh, Goku's, Goku's. He's like a Samwise Gamgee's to Goku's 
Frodo Baggins. So it's his guy Friday. So let's give him a drink. Let's think about that. Um, I think orange, right? I do think orange when I think of this guy. And I like the idea of using Citron, which is actually a Patron product now, mm, which is an orange liqueur. All right, we're gonna make it kind of a sour. I want some, uh, some lemon lime action here. Half an ounce of each. You know what, Krillin's had a few senzu beans in his life. I'm gonna use an ounce of our senzu syrup here to offset that. I'm gonna do three quarters of an ounce of uh, this citronge, half an ounce of Campari. Now I'm gonna use a half an ounce of this Ray and Nephew rum. Ray and Nephew is an overproof Jamaican style rum. Just wanna make sure this drinks all the way up. Full strength cocktail, throwing a little funkiness in there. Krillin was always kind of funky. And now an egg white as well. All right, now we're gonna dry shake. Throw the lice in there, shake it up for real. Shake that sucker up, slippery hands. Strain that in there. Put six, try to put six drops of bitters on it. There you go. And that is my Krillin cocktail. I'm gonna grab my iPhone so you guys can see exactly what I'm looking at from the top of this thing. And that's what I'm calling the Krillin. And honestly, I love it. It's kind of orangish reddish in color. It's got this great six dot top. Let's see what it tastes like actually. Batting a thousand tonight. That is an awesomely cool drink. It's got this sweet orange nose that is chased by absolutely fascinating, intoxicating uh, tonka bean that just gets through your nose and all up into your sinuses and brings so much character. And then that gives way to a very moderated Campari bitterness, which Campari can be pretty divisive. Here, it's, it's nice. It's just nice. It just brings in this nice, hint of bitterness. You're not getting the full potency of what Ray and Nephew can do to a drink. And that's good. That means that everything's working together. Everybody is kind of helping each other along and bending each other into this new direction in this drink. Try it. It's a good drink. It's a very good drink. Does it speak to Krillin's nature? I think so, because there's so many... Krillin is such like a support character, and all of the spirits in this, all of the components are really supporting each other in this drink. Um, no individual thing is shining. And I feel like that's very much Krillin's deal. Um, if one thing is coming to the fore more strongly than anything else, it's Goku. It's the Senzu Bean, and Krillin is all of that. He's right there to support him. Uh, in just one of the most beautiful friendships that's ever been uh, depicted in the anime medium. Well, I made three drinks for Dragon Ball Z characters that I happen to really like, Goku, Bulma, and Krillin. Uh, if there's other Dragon Ball Z characters you think I should make, Trunks, uh, Gohan, uh, Master Roshi, let me know. Maybe we'll get around to them another dra in another episode of Dragon Ball Z. All right, well, this is Team Rocket blasting off. Woo! <laughs> crossing my references. All right, thank you so much for watching. I happen to love Dragon Ball Z growing up. It was an important, formative part of my childhood, important part of my, my young adulthood, my, when I was transitioning from a child into a man. Dragon Ball Z was there to hold my hand and guide me along the way. It taught me to rely on my friends and not fear death because someone can resurrect you with a wish. Uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I am Greg, this is HTD. I'm on the social media at Instagram, Patreon, TikTok, Twitch, and Twitter. I'm always forgetting one. Uh, and I will see you soon with another episode of HCD. Should you like, should you comment, should you subscribe? I wouldn't stop you, but I also don't really think it matters. Just keep watching the show. Enjoy the show. Make the show a part of your life. Put the show on a shelf. Put the show into your house. Invite me into your house. I'm begging you to invite me in. I can't enter until you invite me in. Anyway, here's four more episodes of your favorite show on YouTube, Invite Me In, called How to Drink. And here they are. Check them out. I've been making the show for so long. Why won't you invite me in? And uh, there they are. Uh, I also can't cross uh, running water. See you soon with another episode of HTD. Bye-bye. <laughs>